because it now definitely shows that using real-time CGM, say continuous CGM uh, during pregnancy, does result in does result in better results. <laughs> um, and not only for the glycemic control, but also for the maternal and fetal outcome. And that's what we're doing it for. Uh, the key take-home messages are that um, when you apply real-time CGM from the beginning, that is from the first trimester, um, and you do it well, uh, you uh, improve pregnancy outcome. Uh, that it's a lot of work, um, so the question really is if every physician can do it. Um, and because generally you don't know when you become pregnant, you have to start uh, before conception. And what it also shows is that only half of the women take folic acid. And that's something uh, to think about. Uh, so preconception care um, uh, can be and must be improved apart from the real-time CGM. Um, but we now have definite proof that using real-time CGM results in better pregnancy outcomes. You cannot deny the uh, so solidity of the, um, of the result. So in my opinion, it means that real-time CGM is a definite option, if not a definite must uh, during pregnancy then only in uh, women who are motivated to use it correctly and also um, physicians um, need to be um, uh, will need to be encouraged to use it and to use it properly it's not an easy technique so the, um, I think it still needs a lot of education both for the patient and the doctor and the nurse Well, the next step is, I think, basically, uh, there are two steps. One is, uh, in the group uh, of women starting preconceptionally, the result on the HbA1c is similar as when you start during pregnancy, but there's a lot of variation. So um, I think we have to uh, look again at the preconception period. And what we need to do now is, because this is a randomized trial in a selected group, we have to see what the results are in the real world with all patients and not specifically selected ones.